you guys, seriously, I did not want to have to freaking do another video about Ferguson. I said my piece on this right when it first started, that this whole thing looks engineered and provocateured. And we asked, where's COINTELPRO? We were asking it back on August 14th, just days after Michael Brown was shot, okay? And now we have all these facts that have come out that make it seem even more like why would anybody attach themselves to this particular case? There are so many cases of cops shooting completely innocent unarmed people who weren't possibly going for the gun or whatever, okay? There are lots of cases of that. It happens all the time. And nobody's protesting those on this massive organized scale. And so I didn't want to do another video about this because I feel like it's now to the point where they've engineered this to the point there's so much fear being forced into this 24-7 media cycle, everything else, that it doesn't even matter what the grand jury says. Something is going to go down. It is on, okay? But I came across this because it was sent to me on Facebook. Craig Wood actually sent this to me. There is a Ferguson National Response Network right here that has a list of quote, planned responses for the Darren Wilson, Michael Brown grand jury announcement. Look at this. And I have been through this list. I've looked at it pretty in depth. There are 82 American cities listed here that have, quote, planned responses set for after this grand jury announcement happens and one city in Canada. So there's actually 83 cities on here, but it gets even more organized than this. To me, this is really organized. This is, this is, they didn't just have a web page and type up a list. I mean, this is, look at all the graphics that went into this. This took some work. This is very organized, okay? That's why it's called the Ferguson National Response Network and not just, we're pissed off, so let's go protest, okay? But <laughs> then I started to look into that because I thought, wow, that's pretty organized. Then I found this over on Huff Post Black Voices from just a couple of days ago. And apparently they have direct action trainings. Check that out. They're preparing for the announcement from the grand jury about Darren Wilson and they need you. And they have held direct action trainings on how to engage in this and mass meetings to inform people about the plans for action. I mean, look at this. Here's a, here's a tweet showing one of the trainings. We train, we protest, Ferguson. That's pretty organized. And then I found out they've also put out a rules of engagement on this, where they have rules for this that they want the police to follow and that they want the protesters to follow. Rules of engagement. I mean, just think about that for a second, okay? Because <laughs> when I'm mad about something, I'll turn on a camera and talk about it. Or if I'm going to go protest, I pick up a Sharpie marker, I get a, I get a sign, I go down and find a street corner, and I'm protesting. Or I go find a, the building I want, I get a bullhorn, and I go there. I don't do all of this pre-planning with the graphics and the savvy social media. I found this quote, and I thought it was pretty interesting. Down here it says, these activists aren't your traditional organizers. A common thread runs through some of the most influential organizers. They're black, relatively new to civil rights activism and technologically savvy, masters of social media using Twitter, Vine, and Instagram. They mobilize their peers, document every twist and turn, and annotate history in real time. This cannot all be chalked up to just, we have more technology, we have social media. This is above and beyond, okay, for a protest. Oh, I'm sorry, a planned response. Something else is up here, okay? And I called it, we called it all the way back in the day we were calling it right here. Back in the very beginning, the, the parents of Michael Brown had, what, Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton on speed dial. They were there. Everything was mobilized within 72 hours and this blew up. And there have been shootings since that are horrifying and should actually cause everyone to come together regardless of race, creed, color, religion, whatever, and be outraged at the system instead of something like this, which actually divides people more. I mean, you, you, you've got to ask yourself because there should be outrage from everyone in this country on the bigger police state picture here that affects us all. I have looked at statistics on this. Cops kill an average of three people in this country every single day. Three people a day. Where's all the outrage on that? Where are just the organized protests coming from everybody on all sides of the fence for all of those dead people? 
Okay, ask yourself a few questions here. Why is it this particular case, the one that our government and our mainstream media is throwing all of its time and resources into? Okay, why did it blow up so fast? Why are high-level shills like Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton immediately involved in St. Louis within 24 hours of Michael Brown being shot? Those guys certainly don't jump on a plane and go to every place where a black man is shot by police in this country because they would be on a plane every day because police kill that many people. And it isn't just black people. It's white people. It's elderly people. It's mentally handicapped people. It's people with disabilities. It's children. It's, it's family pets are being shot. I mean, they show up for a SWAT, an unannounced SWAT. They just show up, no knock raid. They'll just kill the dog immediately. A lot of times they go to the wrong house. That has been shown, okay? Where, where are the protests for those people? Why is it this particular case? Why did our Justice Department get so intimately involved in this? Eric Holder went to Ferguson. He ordered not one, but two federal autopsies for Michael Brown. That guy had three autopsies, okay? When does that ever happen? Former attorney generals came out after this and said they did, couldn't believe how many resources our Justice Department, our federal government, was pouring into Ferguson that it was strange from the get-go, okay? This doesn't make any sense. And it hasn't made sense since the beginning. It definitely doesn't make sense now, but one thing is certain, they have pushed everyone's buttons and something is going down. And I wanna know who's funding this because like hell, someone is gonna sit there and tell me this is just organic. This looks completely COINTELPRO, provocateur, infiltrated, whatever. Because make no mistake, every single mass movement in the modern American history, every rights movement, everything, your civil rights movements, your Occupy Wall Streets, all of that stuff has always ended up being infiltrated, even if it started out organically. It always has. This, however, doesn't even seem like it started organically. This looks like a Soros-style phony color revolution, like the stuff they had going on in the Middle East, okay? This is a highly organized, highly scripted, highly funded, obviously, targeted agenda that's going on in Ferguson and people are falling for it. So you have to ask yourself why that is and what's really going on and what the ultimate goal is here. Whatever's about to go down, I would say go look at this list and stay the hell away from these places because whatever they're trying to do, I wish that people would just, all of us, white, black, whatever, just turn our backs and shun the whole system on this one because they're pushing your buttons and you're buying it. If you're getting all wrapped up in this, you are being played, you are being manipulated, and it's working. Because what's gonna ultimately happen is everyone's rights are gonna be taken away a little bit more, more of our power is gonna be given over to this completely corrupt system. That is ultimately what's gonna happen, and it doesn't matter which side you're on.